Near dusk, shadows stretched like reaching darkness. The heat from the summer day, like molten cloths to the chest, digging into the beating heart of a city under siege. Steam and brown water leaked from manhole covers, creating a wet fog that smelled like desperation and a complete lack of infrastructural understanding. People scurried on the sidewalks, sweat dripping down their faces in streaks like tears, silently crying out for someone to save them from themselves. Horns honked in steel gridlocks, fists shaking angrily at the car windows. Darkened buildings loomed, towers of the rich and powerful, holding the populace in the palms of their diabolically malevolent hands. Neon lights snapped and crackled, burning against the coming dark, illuminating the faces of the damned and the forgotten. Wavy heat lines rose from cracked asphalt. A reminder, the extreme temperatures that had descended upon a city of steel and glass. Who will protect us? The people wailed as they darted their gazes up toward the darkening sky in fear. Who will be the champion we so desperately need? If only there was someone out there who could be the hero we deserve. Nay, the hero we require. This was a city filled with disease. Tumors growing in the bones and connective tissue. Spreading with no hope for a cure. This was a city trapped in a war for its very soul. Thin sliver of light threatening to be smothered by the shadows of evil. The scales of truth and justice tipping dangerously toward chaos. But the city was not alone. She had someone who loved her. Someone who would lay down his very life to ensure her survival. Atop a small building that had once been a yogurt shop, but was now a hipster coffee lounge with logs instead of chairs, because what a figure sat perched on the ledge like a stone gargoyle, watching hundreds of years of history pass by in the blink of an eye. This figure shifted slightly the white lenses on his helmet, flashing as the exposed mouth twisted into a furious snarl. This is my city, he growled dangerously, and I will do everything I can to protect your people. His head jerked up at the sound of a scream in the distance. Hark! There's crime afoot! The figure looked off into the distance, the light of a nearby cell tower blinking red as if to say, I am the pulse of Nova City, weak and thready, If only my life could burn forever. Yes, the amazing figure breathed. I hear you. I see you. He rose slowly, the strong muscles of his body shifting sexily underneath the costume, a symbol of freedom and hope and justice. He breathed in deeply. And I can smell you. But also taste? Oh my god, what the hell is that? Holy crap, it's everywhere. He gagged. It's coating my throat? Did someone die and then their body fell in the water and now it's a bloated mess filled with gases and ballooning organs that will soon explode in a burst of... No. Focus. Darkness. Darkness has found its way into... Seriously? Another voice said. I love you. But you've been narrating out loud for the past 15 minutes. And while I appreciate your creativity... We probably should get a move on before the thieves get away with all the jewels. The extraordinary known as Guardian squawked as he lost his footing and fell off the ledge backward onto the roof. He landed roughly on his back, blinking up at the night sky. A moment later, the sky disappeared as a familiar face appeared above him, curls of dark hair hanging down around his face. He wore a sleek costume, black with red piping that ran up the length of his legs and torso. Across his chest... A symbol of a flame, the mark of a hero. Pyrostorm. Guardian growled, voice modulated deeply through his cerulean blue helmet. He pushed himself up off the ground, ignoring the helping hand reaching toward him. I knew you'd be here. Seth blinked. I should hope so. We came together. It'd be weird if I wasn't here. Would it be weird? Guardian hissed. Or would it be all part of your plan to get me alone so you can have your way with me? He took a step back away from the extraordinary, and another, and another, and then the back of his legs hit the ledge of the roof. Thank you for listening to this clip provided to you by Macmillan Audio. 
To hear more, look for this title wherever audiobooks are sold.